Welcome to the Rock Hound Podcast. Uh, today's guest, we have David with Lapidary Dave. Take it away. Howdy, I'm David from Lapidary Dave. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Welcome to the podcast, David. And um, I'd also like to welcome all of you who might be checking in with us for the first time. A warm welcome. And then a huge thanks to all of you that have been tuning in. Some of you we know from like the very beginning because you're leaving comments and that sort of thing. So Thank you for the uh, the warm and wonderful support. And I am Karen from Ozone Fine Art Ventures. And uh, my name is Kurt with uh, Rock County Adventures over in Western Colorado. Uh, Kyle? And I am Kyle. Of, oh, my gosh. I'm Kyle <laughs> from World of Rock Counts, and I'm here in Oregon. <laughs> so uh, how was everyone's week? How about you, David? Uh, busy. <laughs> I have been uh, working on a commission, drilling lots of holes. Oh, man. Wow. It's like That's a so side fun. job. I use a Gunther water swivel, which is uh, like a chuck and a chuck of a drill press. Squirts water through, uses a very overpriced drill bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it drills things harder than like a five, like butter. And you just oh, wow. pump them out. Oh, nice. That. That's cool. Everyone <laughs> should own a Gunther. Not a product placement. <laughs> <laughs> <.com. Yeah. laughs> wow yeah so so um as far as drilling goes like are we talking about a multitude of pieces yeah mostly uh the person i'm working for now does quartz but um yeah it the machine doesn't do soft stuff or harder things that have softer materials in it, it gets caked up caked up and the bit will explode which stinks because the bit's oh, like forty five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that could do like maybe three hundred, four hundred in a day. Wow, and, uh, wow. I get tired. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it pays for itself. Not a product placement. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, if I get tired, I'll make a mistake, and it's not worth it. So I only do tops three or four hundred. Oh, that's still crazy. Like it's hard yeah. to do repetitive work. You know, when I, I hate to say it, you know, lapidary is finite, you know, like you get a chance each stone to, you know, find that right cleavage or the frequency of its like complete explosion or what have you. So, you know, that's like hats off to you for wanting to do like three or 400 pieces a day. Oh, I've definitely ruined people's like heirlooms. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, wow. <laughs> definitely try to drill it. It just cracks oh, in half. Right. And then uh, usually sing. then it's free. It's I don't charge anything for breaking <laughs> <Yeah>. your crystals. <laughs> well, that's good of you. That's a, a wonderful thing. <laughs> I, I try to do the same thing. Like uh, for the slab video that broke, the, the slab that broke, like I offered like, hey, I'm not going to charge you for the broken slab, like just for the, the broken work. But the customer is pretty, pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, I'm still going to pay you. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I still need it. I did spend time trying to not ruin your project. <laughs> well, for me, like oh it's my. it's not it's not my main source of income. So it's like if something breaks or if something goes wrong, like I don't feel that bad about like like waiving like what I offered to like charge them. Um, but everyone for the last few projects that I've had where they something has broken, they've all been very cool and be like, yeah, we're still gonna pay you, no big deal. So. There, there's right. that. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Right on. Yeah. Um, oh, did you uh, want to tell us your wonderful week, Kurt? Uh, about the incident earlier? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, I guess pretty much to start off the week, uh, I have, um, I haven't really done a whole lot. I just finished uh, doing the that update on the tumbling video that I posted, uh, I think yesterday. And um, then I was uh, working on a project for a friend, for my, uh, one of my really good friends out in Texas. And uh, it, uh, I was probably like on like, I was going into stage three onto the uh, 325 grit disc. And I've added a little, I guess, bit of pressure on the wrong side and it snaps right through the center and I filled up my square jar and, uh, <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, mm. it's coming along. I, uh, I just said whatever. And, uh, normally when, like, when I'm working on something, if something goes wrong, 
he's kind of got to deal with it and just move on and make something better out of it. So I made, instead of making one large cab, I decided to make two. So I still have a few more discs to go through, but uh, it'll turn out nice. So nice. Nice. Yeah. Is that um, serpentine? No, it's a, a Australian uh, Rosella opalite. Um, oh, nice. And I know, I know opalite is normally a man-made stone, um, but the, the one like uh, Rosella opalite, I think is the only stone that's actually uh, mined naturally. I have a mine and uh, op uh, Australian or Rosella opalite was actually named after a local uh, green and red parrot um, in the local area where this was mined in 2009. But the uh, mine is now completely complete uh, as there, there, there's no more material in, in the mine. So yes, it's ki kind of a rare out. stone, but at the same time, it's not like super expensive type rare. So, uh, but it's a very beautiful stone. And I, I have had people uh, ask me if that's serpentine before uh, because it is very similar to serpentine, but it's a lot softer. Um, it and, behaves um, like an opal, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> All right, let me uh, get it wet so that way yeah. you can kind of see it a little bit better. Oh, wow. But uh, it's it, it's a very beautiful <laughs> stone. It has a lot, it has some nice red inclusions. And then on the outer edge right here, when you light it up, it has some really beautiful uh, dendritic uh, shapes in there. Oh, so wow. uh, it's a super beautiful stone. But uh, sucks it broke, but. But now you have two. Yeah. Now I, now I, well, he will have two instead of one. So. <laughs> double down right on well so, um, yeah i think uh, i think you're making lemonade out of that for sure yeah good job. so let's your, um, that's... sorry no nah, you're good i was gonna say is your 320 is it like the brown resin pad on your yeah yeah, yeah 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 so it, it it looks like it's starting to wear wear, wear down because i use it a lot but i'm just gonna use it until i can't use it anymore my brown and, uh, <laughs> wears out the fastest out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it seems like. Yeah. yeah, it's a jump. It's a jump going from the uh, the uh, metal, you know, the electric plated, um, mm -hmm. or if you have centered or whatever you're working with, there is a jump from that to the embedded. They mm -hmm. they just c can't be, you know. And so, I think that they offer one that's uh, below that that's purple. Um, yeah. And I do have that with the mini discs and it helps mm -hmm. a lot. Does it? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely takes care of a lot of that. For harder stones, especially before yeah. the jump between 180 and 320 is kind of far for some harder stones. For sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, especially if you got the loop, right? <laughs> like, oh, yo. No. <laughs> There's definitely. scratches on that. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I, I've been curious about that because like some, and some of the stones, it, I, I've noticed like some really fine scratches that I can't get out and that maybe I just need to go ahead and buy that purple wheel because that may help with that. And yeah. I, I know like, uh, I think Jason with rock kind of life is having the same issue right now. So, uh, that is a good idea. So I'll message him that and, uh, yeah, give that a try. What might but, help um, is, um, you can, some people take like a CD <clears throat> if you have the six inch and you could take like a yoga pad like an old yoga pad, cut out the yoga pad, use it for like a backing for cabbing, put the CD over the one of your already laps and then put like silicon carbide sandpaper. And then you can, it's total like life hack with high tech flat laps. Yeah, system. you just like <laughs> made a day. <laughs> like, okay, fact. who has CDs? <laughs> anyway, you know, like, yes. The thrift store, the restore, <laughs> trash Me. can, like dumpsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a used, really good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah for real. I, I used it. to uh, so do like customer service and help for Cab King when I first started as a sponsored artist with them. And people would call with trouble between certain grits and uh i would try to find a solution and not always the solution is buying one of their products depending on the material that they're cutting so give that a shot my brother yeah that let me know how works. Works. yes and we're all going to be like going through our old yes. uh <laughs> like CD i collection. don't know anybody else that yeah it doesn't have spindles of those things like somewhere in a box and you're just going like i i don't know i can't really throw them away but I don't want to ever use them again. 
Yeah, you can <laughs> you can sacrifice the Hank Williams greatest hits, but don't touch the Tony Bennett for sure. <laughs> like I'm sure I have CD ROMs that'll go first. You know, it's like they're they're never mm-hmm. gonna be used. So, so that's awesome. <laughs> that, that and I hear people use that as the backings for um uh doublets. Like you can you can use the CDs for that and albums too, but that's sacrilege to me. You know, if it's vinyl, I'm not cutting oh, yeah. it for a doublet. You know, I'll, well, I'll use obsidian first. Maybe Whoopi John's like Minnesota polka, you can sacrifice <laughs> like <laughs> 50 cents at the thrift store. But don't touch the Black Sabbath or anything for sure. <laughs> yeah, if it's vinyl, it's probably gonna it's safe. But um, well, I don't know if I can I can top your your day or, or week, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we we actually on a dime decided that we were going to go to the Jefferson Wilderness uh, area here in Oregon, which is um, part of the uh, kind of the Sisters Cascade Volcano Mountain Range area. And there's like snow on the ground still. And yet it was 80 degrees on our mountain bike ride and wicked good without any rocks to bring home. It's just so weird. I'm still looking at the ground. I'm like, oh, tough. Oh, there's some <laughs> pine cones. Some, yes. <laughs> there's 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 more basalt and some basalt and tough. And yeah, but it was good. It was it was very uh, soul healing, even though I didn't pick up any rocks. And um, I, I also have some some opals going. So <laughs> I like through some of the different uh, uh, stages and so I'm feeling you Kurt for sure <laughs> yeah. when you cut um, do you like will you do a bunch on one stage and then um, take them along to different grits all together or do you work on one piece and finish it like that's a, a great question um, mm-hmm. is that for Kurt or me oh or for you everyone? sorry with your opals yeah <laughs> oh, I was curious about that too <laughs> Well, you know, that's, that's a good question. And I have to say yes to both because um, it depends on what I'm working with. When I work with like, say, um, Lightning Ridge, um, a lot of times uh, those are doppable and I'm going to be working them on a regular lapidary machine. And in that case, in that case I'm, I'm probably doing a, a, a group so that I can just like work through the stages. Um, when I'm working with the Boulder Opal, that's like, those are those are little cranky children. And so I usually do those one at a time um, from working into the seam and finding it through to uh, what's it going to be, how big is it, you know, cherry picking, like what the the good part of it is, cutting that out and then seeing it through to the the polish just because I'm, uh, have you worked a lot with the, the, the boulder opal, David? Yeah, I used to back in the day. I feel like it's harder and harder to find quality boulder yeah. opal, but about ooh, 10 years ago, I used to get some decent pieces for like, I don't know, like $5 for a piece this big and some wow. things. And um, <clears throat> at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, where was it? It was, I want to say not 22nd Street, but perhaps maybe hmm, near the River Park. Uh-huh. There was a gentleman sell, selling boulder opals really affordably. I can imagine he's just retired. Somebody probably came at that price, wiped it out. And now I have a hard time cutting it because I don't want to pay for weight. I just want to buy the piece. But right. um, yeah. I do love it. And most of the time now, I'm, I'll work a lot of iron stone to sculpt, but not so much like the actual gem of boulder anymore are, like it's funny wanting the spray tan without the rainbow you know yeah, for real. <laughs> you're working the iron stone there's no pull in there um it's it's some messy stuff but it is it is delicious actually when when you're uh carving around in it it's it's very supple and you know it's going to hold together you know for the most part and so that's it's a it's a lovely uh the iron stone is lovely to work with um, and, and I feel like, uh, with opals, they're so character oriented. Every single one is so different that when you're working with one that you just like pulled out of the seam of, you know, one of the ribbons of the boulders, I'll, I'll attach a picture for, uh, for Kyle too, um, that, uh, you, you get to know it and you're so intimate with the, the way that the pattern is going and everything that you want to stay with it. You want to see it through all the way to the end of the polish and not lose track of that with 12, 12 other stones working at the same time for me anyway. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so. pretty, I get spooked with opals. I can't, I can't do production cutting where I'm cutting a bunch at one time. I have to, instant gratification. I got to take it all the way full monkey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I totally hear that. You, you just like boiled down all that I just said, you know, to a sentence in a concise way. Thank you. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> what about you, Kyle? What have you been uh, tackling this week? Well, <clears throat> I did uh, my three videos for the National Geographic um, Things for Kids, which was super fun to do. I actually had recorded all those in the same night back to back. I figured, wow. okay, I'll just record this all right now and I'll do a release for each day. Kind of span it out with the videos breathe because of all the growth the videos on youtube but like how to grow your channel they're like make your let your videos breathe don't release too many all up you know at the same time mm-hmm. so i did that and then uh i got a thousand subscribers yesterday Woo! last night yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations yeah, that was yes. that was pretty exciting i had my my computer recording all day um, the live count while I, while, I, while I went to work and I was worrying that I was going to have to have a recording all night too just to catch that jump from 999 to 1000 but it happened right before I was ready to go to bed and then after that I was just awake <laughs> <laughs> I was excited I was awake I'm like I, I didn't think I'd be that excited but like just seeing it go from 999 to 1000 it's just like all those hours of hard work and late nights of editing and making sure that products products get done for a video. It 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 made my day. Yeah. <laughs> I slept super hard last night, but it made my day. <laughs> so good. You deserve yeah. it, my friend. I think yeah, I probably called cool. my mom and made her subscribe to get like <laughs> called my grandma, like force fed the last like five or six to a thousand. You're a good man. I was, uh, I was wondering, <laughs> I was actually wondering if Kurt had this. Has yeah, yeah it's it. so funny. Because he's like, hey, uh, watch this. And he, he was actually making a video for me. And I thought oh, maybe. that's what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he, like, he had went and like it, like told someone to subscribe to my channel to get a thousand. So I thought he had maybe like a hand in like that little jump. <laughs> uh, he sent me a message. He was like, Kurt, was that you by chance? <laughs> <laughs> Weird timing. No. <laughs> you should have just said yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have those powers. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a pretty exciting feeling. And for everyone that's trying to get to that thousand subscriber like milestone, it's easier for some people and harder for others, but it does take a lot of hard work and don't get dist- discouraged. It just takes mm-hmm. time. And I know there are some people out there that once they get to that that milestone, it just goes up from there. And you just got to keep at it. So mm-hmm. don't give up. And <laughs> another, like another tip to go with that. If you're, if you realize your channel's not growing, like, like it, like, like, like you kind of hit like a stump and it's just not growing, reach out to another channel and ask them for advice. And that can sometimes help. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. We're all chugging along, trying to, <laughs> Yep. Make videos. I think that that's, you know, I, I don't have very many subscribers yet. I'm the little kid in the room, but um, it, my, my inspiration is just doing the work, you know, like mm-hmm. make, polish another stone, uh, dig another one out, um, take another trip, whatever it is. It's like a passion. And so it's fun to watch the numbers, but I have to admit, like, it's, it's way more fun to look forward to like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this next unboxing or my, my Mount Jefferson. Like I have to call it big rocks because I'm going to make a video. (laughs) It's just really big rocks. (laughs) Yeah. It's just fun to be, you know, in it and, and part of the community. And I know no matter how many subscribers you have, everybody like just is so supportive, you know, Mm -hmm. I I keep seeing a few comments like Kyle, how come you don't have any more? Like you should be having more. I'm like, it is what it is. Like it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Get your popcorn. Right on. Yeah. So, uh, any questions? Uh, who wants to start off the questions? Um. um? Yeah, go ahead, Kurt. All right. Uh, are you? Are we asking? Uh, 
questions. David, David, the questions. Okay. Oh, well, so, uh, David, so, uh, what is your favorite mineral? Um, and then what also, what is your favorite mineral to work with? Uh, turquoise and turquoise. I need the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because turquoise is stunning. <laughs> turquoise is, yo, yeah, for real. I got it. Yo. I don't want to get on that stunning. Turquoise, thing. turquoise. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> oh yeah, turquoise is queen of the rodeo out here in the southwest for sure. Yeah, all qualities. I try if I if I work stabilized, I try to work glue flavored turquoise instead of turquoise flavored glue. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, turquoise for sure. It sells as fast as you can cut it. I'm right. not a, a crystal medicine man myself. But uh, mm -hmm. I do appreciate it and respect people who are. And I used to like just get overjoyed when cutting it. And I don't know if it was the medicine that supposedly it has or if the sensation of printing money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turquoise. For sure. So cool. Can, can I uh, uh, like go ahead and bump something onto to Kurt's question there? So if it's turquoise, which, yeah, for sure. Um, what kind? Uh, out here in the Southwest, like... There's a whole bunch of, uh, I wish, like <laughs> everything that I've cut Bisbee was a lot smaller. I'm a yeah. poor boy from a poor family. And like, I cut a lot of Hubei or Hubei mountain that comes in so many different variations. It can be rock hard. It can just melt on your wheels. A lot of number eight, but most of all Kingman and Sleeping Beauty because yeah. it's the most well-known stone. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like when people get into turquoise, you can spot Kingman out of, a hundred stones that's like the one it's probably the most common and easiest to find at a gem show to buy or the easiest um vendor to find is someone selling kingman i do enjoy the odyssey material like their easter blue and uh their royston but um <clears throat> for selling to someone who doesn't know gems or turquoise royston can almost sometimes in the greener qualities look like varicite so yeah. like it's kind of hard to sell green turquoise to someone who doesn't understand turquoise so mostly kingman because you can buy affordable big pieces of blue kingman stabilized or not for sure do you like it patterned or do you like it you know just full color so always patterned <clears throat> because i've cut like some pure uh, Sleeping Beauty and stuff. And I have to like literally convince them that it's turquoise uh, because it has <laughs> right. no matrix. And in America, yeah. like we, we know matrix, like most people who like turquoise, who don't really follow it might have only seen stuff that had matrix um, in what they call Persian turquoise, like in Iran and near Turkey and stuff, they Turkey, hunt yeah. for the pure blue. Right. And like, you know, that is like their quality. We're over here. Like it has to have matrix and matrix um, a smaller stone with high, with better looking matrix can sell better than some larger stones that are pure to someone who doesn't understand or in a bracelet at a shop or in a ring. So almost always, I won't buy pure colored stuff anymore because it's just too hard to sell. And if I'm not selling it, I don't care how much I like it. Like I don't have a collection. I, I sell everything that I make. I want a collection. I don't sell things that are given to me, but I don't have like a turquoise collection because I'm there to sell it. So I don't buy pure stuff anymore. I had some pure Persian and some pure, um, I've had pure Kingman, I've had some pure uh, Egyptian. And it just, it looks like to, to someone who doesn't know, it looks like plastic, especially right. if I'm polishing it too good. And I won't polish turquoise to 14,000 and further anymore because it shines too much. And people- oh, wow want like um in native american jewelry sometimes you'll see polished saw marks and i love it. it like and i don't go too hard on um polishing turquoise anymore because it's easier to sell 1200 grit without a final polish than it is for me to sell a 50,000 grit that's interesting bling, like blinger interesting yeah. Yeah, you'll never really hear someone complain about that in the agate world <laughs> for sure the shinier the better Right. Yeah. Well, you're, you're bringing up a wonderful point about market, David, as far as like what people find recognizable about the quintessential aspect of the stone that think they're looking for. And so turquoise for a lot of people is a dustier looking stone. You know, it's a little bit earthier looking, especially in a lot of the, um, 
native uh, jewelry that they find it in. Although, you know, of course you see it like just amazingly finished as well in same said jewelry. And so it's, yeah, it's an interesting market. Yeah, in Santa Fe, like in their plaza, you'll see a lot of stuff just polished above and beyond. Yeah. But their shop space and their price tag almost guarantees you that it's legit. Like right. just the store has the provenance for it. You don't even need to know what it is and you know it's real. Or it Where says mean, Begay on it or something, you know. And mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you're not going to doubt De Beers or Jay's, Jay, Jay's, what is it? K's jeweler. You're not going to doubt their diamond. <laughs> that is legit. You almost want it to be fake so that you can sue them. <laughs> like you're not going to get a fake gem from De Beers, you know? Yeah, I, I actually, my uh, my wedding ring is from K's and I told him I want a natural, real emerald. I don't want lab created and I will know. <laughs> yeah. Yo, congratulations on breaking yeah. the, the diamond wall that is what we were all born with. I do have diamonds like, in my ring, but they're the they're the accent stones on either side of the emerald. Um, but if you look close enough, you can see um, carbon in the diamonds. So they're they're not one hundred percent pure. So are they you wearing are, it right now? No, it's it's. Oh, being, I want to see it. I want to smell it through the camera. It's it's being serviced right now at K's. <laughs> I had to send it in. <laughs> do they do that for free? Uh, mm, so it, it all depends. They. When you get a ring, you have to have it serviced every six months. And I noticed that my emerald was loose, so I sent it in. Sent it in. And what it is is, if you don't have your ring sent in every, or if you don't have your ring checked every six months, then your warranty is void. Void if you had gotten a warranty with your ring. So I am very Thanks. adamant on making sure that my ring is checked every six months, because uh, uh, this is like the third or fourth emerald I've had in my ring. I should have went with a more harder stone. I should have went with my actual birthstone, which is sapphire, which is like what nine. <laughs> if you're lucky, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely an interest, interesting way that they have things set up. Like you would think that they would, you wouldn't have to keep basically taking it to the shop. Like, hey, yeah, keep, make sure the stones are safe every six months, and then it makes it a little harder now since they shut down the K's in Albany. Uh, here in Oregon, so we have to go all the way to Kaiser, just go to a K store, and on a Sunday, which is really the only day that we have at, together together as a family to go somewhere, malls don't open till noon. Most stores <laughs> oh, don't open man. till noon on Sundays. I'm like, why? <laughs> Poor yo, um, is your emerald Colombian, Brazilian, Afghanistan? Do you know? I Wait. don't. I, I know that. I'd be able to tell you. <laughs> oh, that's why you wanted to see. <laughs> yeah. I can I could try to find a picture and send it to you. Um, oh, that'd be but awesome. I know, I think it was, I can't remember if it was the first emerald or the second emerald I had in there, but I, it might have been the second one because the first one broke. Um, I don't, okay, I remember if it broke or if they broke it. Something happened to it and I had to get another one. Oh, man. That's wild. Like if you take your, ring to a small time repair shop if they broke it you're gonna know but if you take it back there and they just replace it because they broke it maybe you wouldn't um i think i had it sent in to get um the ring replated or re like whatever they do to plate the the gold rings or because i have white gold so they have to keep like rhodium or something they put on the outside yeah that's exactly what it is um i always pay close attention to the stones and in in the ring just make sure like nothing's broken nothing's chipped and at one point, I sent it in to get done, and I think they had to use a sander on it, and the sander mar- uh, marked up the table top of the stone. And I noticed it. I'm like, this was not like this before I sent it in. Oh, my. And so I, I wow. called them out on it, and they replaced it. Um, I know at one point, they actually had a hard time getting a stone in because there was some uh, relation issues between the states and whatever country the emerald was coming out of. So it was on hold for a while. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, that's why you have to photograph your jewelry that you take to any repair and video it very well. You have to every single time. Doesn't matter if it's a local shop or the big boys, you got to do it. But there's you got been, lucky. <laughs> there's been times I've, I've actually wanted to apply for a jewelry store because I, I, I have an understanding of how rings are made, how they do the settings and some of the the 
the terminology for the stones and the different surfaces. And at one point when I went to get to have a ring checked and I told him, like, Hey, you know, the, 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 the girdle of the stones not quite set in flush with how it should be. And the guy I was working there is like, Oh, you actually know what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And like, I think at that point they were kind of sweating. I'm like, Oh, we should probably be careful. <laughs> yeah. No matter how fancy their tie and cologne are, you know, isn't going to give them the knowledge of those eyes that take patience yeah, and, and passion to look for. And a lot of times I'll be there and um, a couple people that, that are working there, you know, they'll just take a ring and head towards the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm like, uh, you can't do that with emeralds. You cannot. Oh. Put... And they're like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yo, All right. who I... are these people? <laughs> yeah. That's why the K is closed down. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I'd be overqualified to work at the store. Yeah, you should. <laughs> they friend... need you. Yeah. Your polish on everything you make is impeccable. I bet you your jewelry would be stunning. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be hard to do something like that, like on a mass scale. Like it would, it would almost take the fun out of it, if that makes any sense. Like I don't mm -hmm. mind doing like small scale stuff here and there, but like mass scale. I mean, I, I give you credit for like drilling holes in the hundreds of hundreds of beads, but if that were me, I'm like, man, this is too much work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like tedium. The money is is very influencing. Yeah, I charge by the hole, not by like the job. So That's it's fair. like I try to like just have like a chalkboard and just well, yeah, just <laughs> just mark them all out. I think my first big job was twelve hundred holes for a chandelier in Texas at a wow. casino. Wow! And um, I made them buy me a extra, extra bunch of extra bits. They had to pay me in advance, and uh, so that just. If they, if they, what they paid me in advance was all I got would have been worth it. But so it's money is inspiring. It shouldn't be for your art, which is probably why you have a much better polish than me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just takes practice. I mean, honestly, anyone can do it. It's just, it all, it all depends on how good um, someone's eye, eye of detail is or detail for, or whatever, however that phrase goes. <laughs> eye for detail. So, uh, hi, Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Kayla's my best friend and business manager. She runs all of uh, the online sales. Nice. Right yeah, we caught uh, her in Tucson, I think, on this last round on all those live dealies, right? Oh, yeah, for oh, real. Was she along? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was there when my grandma farted on camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on a live. <laughs> Thanks, grandma. <laughs> Didn't expect that one. No. <laughs> And it was uh, percussive for sure. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. She has no shame. Okay. She's cool. a real one. Welcome to the Raw right. Cow and Podcast, where we're this time we <laughs> uncensored, but still G rated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I owe her everything. I would have never have gotten to the lapidary without her. She's been going to the Tucson show for like 25, 30 years. And uh, when I first started going with her, I didn't like rocks at all. Well, I did not like rocks, I just didn't care. And I would take a bunch of instruments and sell them in her booth, like drums and guitars and banjos and stuff. They'd sell really fast. And then she would sell out in like a day or two. She makes uh, Native American style drums and teaches the healing cool. power of the drum. And uh, so she'd sell out and we'd have to be there under contract for 30 days. So I just wander around and I wandered into <laughs> Diamond Pacific. They let you cut on their machines for free. What? Okay, I need to go. Oh. Yeah, you That's have to. Cool. You can just, you know, and uh, they would shoot people off. And Big Don from Diamond Pacific, I overheard him saying when they were going to kick me out. And he's like, I'll leave him. He's good for business. And I uh, got to pick his brain on what's going on. And uh, yeah, I owe it all to my grandma for dragging me to the Tucson show, which I hated. Uh, <laughs> at the, now which, it's like, which venue is that that, that you guys started at? Uh, she's been in Keno forever. Okay. since like 25 30 years right across from the food court we have like big powwow drums usually like a bunch of musicians will come over and so the you can hear us anywhere in kino yeah like these yeah. giant like i know drums. you now <laughs> yeah Yo, you know that booth across yeah. from the kino show yeah that's, that's my crazy. grandma yeah because <laughs> i started going uh in the late 80s and so yeah I would have I heard that I was a golden time. It was the golden time for Tucson, man. It was so good. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, I would have uh, definitely overlapped with your booth. That's neat. 
Cool. What's funny is I hear it was a great time for a lot of material, but some materials that are popular today were way more expensive back in the day, like Labradorite. You can get a big piece of Labradorite this big for 25 bucks full flash from someone like, I don't know, at the, the Pueblo show over there next to the hotel strip or anywhere in Kino. Maybe and um, we're now back in the day that would be well over a hundred dollars, yeah. and they just weren't pushing it. And now it's like you you, you spend more on lunch than a large freeform labradorite today. We used wow. to not eat lunch. It's crazy. Like <laughs> good idea. Rocks are more important than food. I try to tell myself we that. We spend our money on anything like some coffee yeah. and maybe beer and fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you know, we made sure that there was going to be, you know, we either had plane tickets or, or, you know, fuel in the car, but yeah. Yeah. But, but back then um, it was interesting. Charo White was coming onto the market and um, pearls were a complete bust. And so there were like banquet tables of pearls high, like three feet on them. Like oh, just man. take them. Wow. Yeah. Yo, I have a dirty pearl addiction. <laughs> I love <laughs> pearls, especially yeah, me too. Pearls. long yeah. stem broke pearls. I went to find my grandma one today. Um, this year at the jogs, not jogs, excuse me, uh, Holodome. I, the the Holodome is my favorite. And I was looking at $50 <laughs> to $80 for one Baroque pearl. Yeah. Just wow. Yeah. And I do think I remember, you know, like a decade ago, them being way cheaper. And they were like way we, cheaper another decade ago. And yeah, because yeah, it, it was a bust. <laughs> like it, the, the market was glutted. And so Boulder Opals and Pearls, like that's, I filled up my bag with that stuff to go home with, you know, it was stupid. <laughs> so I can't go anymore because I'm spoiled. I just don't go. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I like to go. Uh, I, I, I shopped a little differently than most um, at any kind of rock show um, just because I used to work at a rock shop and like a lot of the um, stuff that's made overseas, I right, like the mass produced trinkets. Like I just walk right by. Like is, you can get those in any kind of catalog. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I look for more interesting items that I that kind of are unique, but also affordable. Um, and lately, it's been stuff that I can fit on my shelf. Like I don't want like something huge. <laughs> uh, but it's also if I can if, like I I like making knife handles. If I can find something that's that's beautiful but affordable. I'll get something for for a knife handle, but I'm very picky when I go shopping, and I'm also trying to stick to a very tight budget. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I can't afford the coffee sometimes, and so lucky that from my videos, people recognize me and they'll ask me to film their booth in exchange for rocks. Most of the stuff I brought back this year was just gifts. It's a fair oh, trade. That's, so awesome. that's a really fair so trade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I feel gonna... bad, like if the video is bad or if it's not what I think does, was worth what they gave me. It's just like, uh, well, you'll get them my... next year. I mean, <laughs> you, they know you're going to be back, so you can always get a, yes. you know, a rebate on that. Um, I was going to ask, I actually ask you for my question. What was the craziest thing you've seen at a show? Because I know you've seen some really crazy stuff. You had some wonderful pieces of uh, they were a myriad of different kinds of stones that were set that um were backlit so that you know those window pieces yeah those those were z's z e e s z's <laughs> yeah. and um <clears throat> that gentleman just started those like three or four years ago it's pretty much mosaics yeah backlit no glass um on steel and those are really really cool z is a quality person if you folks haven't seen Z, you folks watching, you go to Tucson, go check him out. He doesn't just have these fantastic mosaics, but he also sells amazing high quality, like turquoise cabs and stuff. Those are great. Um, I really like the higher quality Brazilian gemstone parrots and stuff. Like they make parrots and eagles and owls out of gemstones. Um, those are some of my favorites. So a lot of folks might have seen smaller, lower qualities where they're using brass and a lot of resin, but they do like make giant like parakeets out of like one piece of rhodochrosite Crazy. and they can, wow. they can be super expensive. Uh, unfortunately, some of the best stuff I've seen was at the wholesale shows where you can't film without permission. Yeah. 
And I've seen like $400,000 pan sized ammonite pendants. And those are probably some of my favorite. And um, just, uh, I like the gemstone paintings coming out of Hong Kong where they're crushing up gemstones and they're like taking a spoon or something and knocking these powders of gemstone to make this beautiful painting and they do it live. And uh, those are probably my most favorite are the pulverized gemstone paintings and the craziest thing I've seen because uh, they, they must take hundreds of hours. Wow. Honestly. That's so, cool. I want to go back to that. Sorry. I want to go back to that. Was it? Ammonite? Ammonite? Oh, Amalite. Okay, Amalite. Okay, that's sense. I was gonna sorry. say, I was like, why would an Amal Amalite yeah, be sorry like four hundred thousand dollars? No, still yeah, like, it was still more or less the same thing. It's just the different byproduct of that of that fossil. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was Amalite. I imagine they were made overseas because they weren't the traditional carrot of gold. I think they were a lot finer than anything we would really consider traditional in America. Like if you go to K's or De Beers or something, they use you know, 14, 18, 20, right. but it might've been pure because this stuff was like macaroni yellow. It was wow pure. Wow. And uh, I did get a little bit of footage of that. I haven't put that video up yet, but um, most of the crazy stuff I can't film. I've been kicked out, I think two times over the years for filming. And so far they don't put your face on the ID card. So I'm still able to make it back every year. <laughs> so I think that's kind of a, I mean, I can, I can understand why they would want filming, but at the same time, that's free advertising for them. Yeah. <clears throat> so I got some reasons I would love to share. One is if it's a unique design, especially with Native American jewelry. Okay. If, sounds, yeah. if just from a photo, you send that photo to Bali, Thailand, Hong Kong, um, you know, Jaipur, Rajasthan, they can make that 20 times cheaper, maybe even better with the exact same materials, the same quality, maybe even higher quality turquoise, way cheaper. And you're not just ripping off an artist, you could be ripping off a whole family. Like the Effie family, they make like snake themed Native American jewelry. I I see them faked so often um, all over the world. And um, so you're ripping off a whole family just from a video. So I don't even attempt without being asked to film Native American jewelry. Another one is, um, so my last, my 2020 Tucson Jim and Mineral Show video, my last video, I have a lady yelling at me to not film her gold. And I didn't film her gold. She just, I was pointing the camera in the similar direction. She called the security at the TCC. And uh, <laughs> that was a bad thing. I'm used to her by now. That's a big and, venue and, to get, <clears throat> and, get out of. <laughs> and some people are like, you know, it's, a, it's grown by nature. Why would she not like it? Well, being at the TCC has to cost thousands of dollars. I, you know, my particular venue, some people pay between like, oh, 1200 and maybe $20,000 to vend a kino. TCC is a three-day show. It's considered the Tucson Jim and Mineral show. Everything else is a satellite. She must, I wouldn't be surprised if she's paying $15,000 to vend there. Wow. So if I'm filming something she had to upcharge, and I'm like, wow, look at that for $100,000, a piece of gold that looks like coral. And she would really sell it for $60,000. I'm doing her, her a huge disservice because people, I show the cards in my videos from where, what, what I'm yeah. looking at. And people will be like, I'm never going to buy from her. In fact, I remember you from Blackberry Dave's video. You're a ripoff. And yeah. so like, I'm, I'm hurting them sometimes by filming, mm -hmm. by being an unknowledgeable misrepresentation of their product. <clears throat> and gotcha. then- the third one could be that they are shady. Like um, I do hear that there are people walking around these larger gem shows, making sure people are selling what they're really claiming it to be. Yeah. But I do see um, Howlite and Magnesite turquoise colored beads um, being literally sold as natural turquoise. I bought some to make a video on what we're talking about now and it's literally labeled natural turquoise with mm -hmm. like $27 for like an 18 inch strand. I actually bought some beads from her, asked her to throw it in because I'm not going to pay $27 for it. But, um, and that's the third reason why they don't want you to film. They might think that you're like uh, working for them and stuff. You know, I know in our case, uh, since my grandmother sells Native American style hand drums, we do have some people 
that from the Pueblo here in Taos, New Mexico that make drums for her that we sell. But we do get the, um, what do they call it? Uh, like native affairs, you know, they'll come and ask us, did you make this drum? No, it was made by Carl Winter. It was made by uh, Charlotte Throwing Flower, you know, and they go around and they do check. So people who are selling shady stuff might not want you to film. And that's, I think that's the third reason and probably the rarest why they wouldn't want you. Number one is you're going to steal their idea. In Quartzite, I just filmed a gentleman from Afghanistan selling cabs and they were bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he messaged me, said, please take down these videos. People are going to steal our ideas. And I'm like, well, it's a teardrop. It's an oval, <laughs> but I don't need to be asked twice. Take it yeah. down. No hard feelings. And then he, I met him in Tucson this year and he's like, yeah, and my brother has a cab shop and he's sends people over to film my stuff to know what materials are trending and what should I sell for $2 and $3. And so sometimes, you know, I don't, it, it doesn't take like a multi-million dollar operation for someone to steal your stuff for you not to want to be on camera. Could be your brother wow. <laughs> in Afghanistan. That makes sense. That's great. Yeah. Kyle, do you have a question? Uh, I was going to kind of ask the same question I've been asking a lot the last uh, several guests. Um, I can try to switch it up a little bit. Uh, this is the Effie family. Oh, yeah. Nice. They, they're famous for these little snakes. Oh, nice. You know, it's really cool, cool, cute, and collectible, but this is probably one of the most counterfeited out of the Philippines and uh, Thailand and stuff. And, oh, that's you know, tough. it's not hard to make and it's easy to stamp Effie on the back. Hmm. So anyway, sorry for interrupting. I just, Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> wanted to show it's it's your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so, and other videos I've asked like our guest, um, do you think there are any famous people that are into rock counting and are secretly watching everyone's content? And if you had a guess, who would you think is into the hobby and part two, since you go to all these shows, have you seen any famous people shopping at these shows? So for number one, I know Tom Green, the comedian and actor, is in the raw counting. Oh, that's cool. I've heard, I've heard <laughs> yeah, through is. the grapevine that he's going to maybe put out a series. He did have one video of him raw counting uh, fire agates in New Mexico. He didn't hint, if I'm not mistaken, into the series, but the rumor has it that that's going to be a thing. Uh, you know, for... I actually am... I'm sorry. I don't remember the first question exactly, but I know a lot of, you know, in the country Western scene, uh, I'm a musician first and an artist second and all my Southwestern friends in Nashville, like who play country Western and bluegrass are crazy for, you know, turquoise and stuff, not necessarily rock hounding, but my brain's not working and I don't remember part two. Oh, have I seen any famous people? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah, um, mostly musicians. Uh, the lead singer from the South American punk band Cafe, Cafe Tokuba. I saw him at Kino. We hung out at our booth. Uh, we've had Kevin Bacon at our booth. What? In, in Kino. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my grandma used to have uh, Dennis Hopper over and he would pretend to be in a wheelchair supposedly because i guess the idea is that people don't stare at people in a wheelchair oh so that's can, smart so he can get by yeah uh celine dion but yeah i could go on if i just thought about it but definitely <laughs> you've seen a few i saw seal here in taos last year the the actor with the spot on his face dressed in like full Russian coat with the big, tall Russian hat. <laughs> nice. And it was so extra that I don't think anyone was paying attention. He was looking around like, I'm Seal. Does anybody see me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do Hope you I have... didn't butcher your questions. <laughs> no. Did that answer your question, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, so uh, do you have an instrument within striking distance of your hand right now? Uh, I can get one in a, like two seconds. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he threw the hammer down. He, he mentioned, we did ask him about that, right? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that we were interested, Kurt. You, you yes. said so, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I was trying to think. I was like, what are we talking about? But yeah, I uh, Play, asked yeah, him playing. I asked him about that a, a few days ago, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because as uh, the when, whenever he first told seconds. me about whenever hey. he first told me about the band that or like one of the main bands he he plays with, I was looking it up on YouTube. I was like, this is like a hardcore rock like band. And he was like, no, it's like bluegrass folk and i was like oh okay and then he sent me the link of that uh uh that one song about the uh i don't remember what it's called but uh i was actually listening to it earlier today uh sound that's a really cool song okay so i brought one (laughs) did you want to hear something yes yes okay no we just wanted to see your instrument we're done okay (laughs) so this is gonna be (laughs) <laughs> the intro to my channel, I just didn't know how to water it down to like, I don't want to do a 30 second intro for the YouTubes. Yeah, I think like 12 to 15 is better because uh, I think people's attention spans are short, but this is going to be the intro. It's a bossa nova. Anyway, that was messy, but it was like a shopping, <laughs> it's like shopping, like elevator music. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I like it too. Yeah, no, that fits. <laughs> Buy my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. Looking forward to that intro. Um, so what what styles do you typically like to play? Uh, I like Latin American music. My favorite thing to play is the accordion. Get uh, out. Yeah, Get like Colombia, Nort- Norteño. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, growing up in the Mexican family, like accordion is king. Yeah. And everything like else is just helping the accordion. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, out here in the Southwest, country, Western, and bluegrass pays the bills. Yeah. And I, at first, I was thinking, you know, I specifically remember young me saying I would never play this. But then the money and the dancing and the ladies and just the fun. <laughs> and now I love country, Western music. Waylon Willie and the Boys for life. When I finally get an RV, I'm going to paint, like, <laughs> all the country heroes, Dolly Parton, Waylon Jennings, Hank Williams. <laughs> you know everybody and i'll and so i the idea is so that i don't get pulled over but then i thought <laughs> i'll probably get pulled over so that the officers can take a picture you're getting uh, pulled over cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the picture. yeah for real and my like crusty crawler like 1976 winnebago just oh. but if i paint it country western it might <laughs> save me someday yeah is the idea yeah. The quote is like, when I get an RV. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> oh, that's great. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, uh, do you, do you fellas have another question for David? Cause I have another one. Uh, sure. Um, what is your, well, no, I don't. Sorry. It just, it was there. And then it was just like, yeah. <laughs> It's gone. I, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> What's the most difficult stone that you've cut, do you think, David? I mean, you know, that really wanted you to fill the swear jar and chuck it across the room and not get the RV. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so I had a really hard time with agates my whole life. Like some of them, like if you use an inferior wheel, you stand a lot less of a chance. If You, you got to use Diamond Pacific. Or like there's two other ones that are pretty good, like REZ, which is Cab King's premium brand or Johnson Brothers. But um, agates were tough for me because even if I think I got a good polish, if I'm pushing too hard, running a little bit less water so it's a little bit more aggressive, you can still burn up some agates like you can an opal or a piece of fluorite. And I never knew that thing existed. Nowadays, not so much the case. I bought a Richardson Ranch high-speed grinder Ooh. Oh, those things are scary. Which is, yeah, very scary. I was going to say, very scary and dangerous. Uh, bull wheels supposedly are pretty dangerous, too. They spin twice as fast as a lapidary machine, no water, and silicon carbide. 
Yeah. And so you have to have like this huge respirator and you have to be really gentle because it'll eat your fingers away. Right. And, uh, but so now that I'm good at that, agate's not the thing. What it is for me is anything with metals. Um, I'm not good at knowing what compounds to polish materials that have a lot of metal, like Apache gold or perperite or meteorite. You know, I use Zam, Fabuluster, uh, Lindier, cerium oxide. And there might be something else out there or a technique I don't know about, but today agates are good, but metal heavy metal materials i am not good at yeah i had a hard time with um i have a piece of dancer bone that has a pyrotized cell uh, structure and i had a hard time getting that polished up too just because it was you have a really soft softer material the dinosaur bone and then you have something a little bit harder uh the pyrite and it, i mean i think pyrite's like hard and soft at the same time so it's like it scratches mm. super easily I need to see this, by the way. Either put it in the video or send me a picture. <laughs> I need ring. to see this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. He's got it. He's got it. It's coming. Instant grab. <laughs> At the holster. Give me one second here. I'm going to make it so I can make sure I get a good picture of this. Whoa. There you go. Yeah. It just yeah. locked in. And this is a just, is this a pre-polish right now or is this your final polish? That, that's the final polish. I had a hard time getting a, a super shine on there, but I got it as good as I could, but it's pretty cool. You get, it's the, actually the knuckle of the bone. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like the straight oh, up dino Oh, you're just knocking foot me right out. There. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's like some Fred Flintstone stuff right there. <laughs> say, what, else, what else do you guys want to see? <laughs> that's I'm going to make a ring out of that whole thing, you know, Yo, like the real. Wilma. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my little uh, fossilized section of my collection for um heavy metal included materials i won't even attempt to buff it anymore i just take it to 3000 grit on my easy cab if you haven't heard of easy cab folks check it out it's a great machine made in utah and uh then i just take um i use 14,000 and 50,000 wheels on my cab king and i won't even try to polish it because i just mess it up every time you got to teach me your secrets, Kyle. I need to know. You get <laughs> some of the best polish on everything I see you make. I mean, nothing is done first try. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> um, for those listening that follow my main channel, it might look perfect towards the end or close to, I want to say perfect. It looks good at the end, but I'm telling you, if I can put a camera in the corner of my shop to watch me work, there's a lot of back and forth on all my machines. There are some machines where I'm sitting on that just one, on that one machine and go from there to the polish. But there's times I go from my, my Genie to my cab machine to my Sanders. I am just like back and forth the whole time until I can actually get a finished product that I'm happy with that passes in my standards. Yeah. Which is why sometimes for my customers, it takes a while because I will not give them anything less that, that I... It has passed my standards, basically. If I can't, if it doesn't pass my standards and I can't get a good polish on it, it's free. I won't charge uh, for it. You're a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> I tell folks that time is money because time is diamonds flying off of your wheels, regardless if it shines or not. You are a very nice man. Nova wheels are <laughs> expensive too. I think I paid like so 120 for my wheels. Mm. And that was at the local rock shop. And I think... I think they're much more expensive on uh, online through the stores now, I think. For those uh, of you folks listening that don't know, he's talking, two, we said 220 I, I paid 120 for my Nova wheels. That's for a six-inch wheel. That's not for an eight-inch oh, wheel. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, six-inch. <laughs> Yo. Eight-inch wheels are more expensive. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. But worth it. Worth every penny, you know, mm -hmm. for the finish that you get. I would love to get uh, the uh, eight-inch wheels. For uh, bigger, bigger pieces of, of um, for more working space, basically. But again, it's money. <laughs> Have you ever seen people take two wheels without using a spacer that are the same grip, push them together? Oh, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. It works really well. And and um, what's cool about it is you wear out the middle, then you flip the two wheels backwards, and then they're fresh again in the middle. Oh. And 
So like you mm. just take two of the same grit, 280, six inch. And if they're like an inch and a half, you get a nice three inch spacing. If it's eight inch and they're usually two, then you get a good four. I don't know. <laughs> I think the gentleman, Mark, who does a lot of dino bone stuff on YouTube, but I don't remember the gentleman's last name. His name is Mark. He made like a dinosaur bone belt buckle. He has a video. That was on. perfect. Like, I mean, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, like it, the, the seams were just flawless. Yeah. And did it have like a, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex yeah. in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. That dude. Yeah. He's, he's stunning. If I didn't have a belly, I'd, I'd, I would probably wear that thing, but my belly would just hide it all the time. I'd oh, you, you my need gut a up. big <laughs> one. You need a really, really big one. <laughs> we got a stunning. <laughs> Yeah, I used to say that's a blessing. And if, if anybody goes back and watches my 22nd Street video, which did pretty well last year, had like a hundred and something thousand. Mo yeah. Like a good, no joke, half of the comments were like, I can't stand listening to you. If you say that's a blessing again, I'm going to unsubscribe. Oh. And so I just erased all of them. Like, forget oh. it. That's the way to yeah. do it. I remember and that one. <laughs> I want to do a giveaway where I re-upload it, unlist the other one. And if people can guess during the premiere, how many times I say it's a blessing, they'll win something. It's got to be 40 something times, maybe. Yeah. You probably get to unless like that. every booth a couple times. Yeah, it's least. bad. Yeah. What, what, what it is is that I'm so tired when I get there dehydrated and just my sheer mass makes me tired that I'm like, can't think. And I'm just flowing and, and I can't, I have like zero vocabulary by the time I make it to some of these places to film. And uh, yeah, I say the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> well we're glad that you go through it for us all yeah, yeah. like because i i do miss going to tucson and i love watching your videos for that you know it's my fix you know yeah thanks i never wanted to be the tucson gem show dude i always started just doing education and teaching what i learned when i learned it but that popped off now it's like i have to go and then it's just too much of a party like i go play music with the brazilians or play Kirtan with the East Indians and stuff. And now it's just oh, wow. so much more than the gem show for me. It's, yeah. it's like a world party. <laughs> if oh, you know where to look, a world if party. you know where to go. Oh yeah. yeah. No, we used to do conventions and we used to uh, host the, the Indian gem uh, association every year. And so, oh, nice. yeah, it was so much fun. Those guys were a blast and the food was so good. So yeah, it's, it's neat because you do get like everybody from all over the world bringing their gems and their passion. You know, we're talking about the gem community here and they're the, they're the guys that are telling you the stories about mining in Pakistan, mining in China, mining, you know, it's fun to talk to the miners. It's talked to, you know, a lot of them are agents, but then you, you do get to talk to the guys too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super fun. And if you're nice, they'll invite you out there. Yeah. And you can go dig around. I've been invited to go in little holes in Sri Lanka looking for moonstone. That's cool. To Iraq, Iran, all over Mexico, all over China. And if you, that's why you got to not negotiate too hard. It's better to have a friend for life than to get 50% off of one little thing that you buy. Yeah, I, I have people. Getting that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I have people that to this day remember me from my first Tucson Gem show where I wouldn't pay more than 50% for anything. Yeah. Stand there for 20, 30 minutes arguing, like almost yelling to get this thing. And I'm like, I know what you pay for it. I know what you can give me. And they won't. Some people, like um, behind the, oh, what is it? Like the Motel Six and stuff still remember me and don't want to sell me anything from that first time. I'm a completely different person now. <laughs> completely different person but they will remember you and so making friends is better than making a one-time deal that's a beautiful sentiment right there mm -hmm. okay so who wants to, to ask that question about the world and such anybody wow. where where does david want to go in the oh. entire world oh yeah <laughs> Sarah, because like, like yeah, in the previous episodes, so, I mean, not the last couple one, but you've had like at least a fourth question. So yeah, um, I guess I, I, I do you want to take it or do you're you doing me? it? Okay, doing I guess it. I'll do it. Um, if you didn't have to worry about money or time, and you could had can go anywhere in the world to look for um, to rock hound to mine to do whatever, where would you go, and what would you want to look for? Hmm. That's such a hard question. So oh. many possibilities. 
maybe to Mali in Africa. I think they say that's where like the prenite comes out of. And uh, half of it's the rock and half of it's the culture and the music. Mm-hmm. But I know they have a great scene. The Tuareg are fantastic jewelers. Um, they work a lot of like emerald, turquoise, and um, carnelian because they're Muslim. And those are the materials I believe that can go into a mosque. Then you're not supposed to wear certain materials. And uh, Mali, for sure. Right on. Definitely. Nice. Kick it with the Tuareg, drink some tea, and smoke a million cigarettes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Amadine, right? That's the word for friend. In America, we throw the word around friends. You know, I barely know you. You're my friend. But over there, friend is family. I mean, it, Dean. Nice. That's where I want to go. Nice. <laughs> well, the gnome has spoken. <laughs> know me. So, <laughs> you know, we, we didn't hit the um, what projects we were working on at the Oh, beginning. we still can. So I think that we should round with that. And then then the last question, uh, Kurt, you got some projects you're working on? Um, well, I'm still, I still need to finish this. <laughs> I've been holding on to this stone since we started. <laughs> and polish it. But, uh, <laughs> He's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, 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 yeah there, I, I, I need to finish working on both of these pieces and um, um, hopefully, yeah, I, I just, I basically just need to finish them. Um, but the probably something that I'm going to be working on is uh, another one of these for someone else. That's hopefully doesn't it doesn't break, and also some of the um, I can't remember so, some opal that fire opal I got from uh, Oregon that I'm going to try and polish. Hopefully, nice. it doesn't bust on me because every piece I've worked on has fractured at some point. Let's not so, have I'll send that. You some I'll, send you some, I'll send you some opal too. We'll collaborate okay. in the video. Okay, cool. That'll, that'll <laughs> yeah. be awesome. Perfect. You're allowed to break it into a million pieces. So. But <laughs> you have to share that. it on camera when it explodes. Or, Ooh, yeah. 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 That yeah. would be good. I was, I was making a video out of this one until it broke. And then I was, I, I hit that stop button and I, I was, I was furious. But, uh, no, yeah, <laughs> I get mad. Post it anyways. Like, <laughs> cool down post it and then tell people like accidents do happen yeah 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 i still may there, there, there's a gap between when i was polit when i was on, on on the wheel to where it actually broke so normally when there's a big gap like that i just whatever and turn it into a tiktok video or instagram video or, or something awesome. but uh um, I, I think tomorrow I'm gonna. I, I, I need to go out to Fruita, Colorado, and um, I'm, if I have service, I'm gonna try and just do a random live rock hound hunt and see how that works out. Which I was actually kind of curious. I was wanting to ask you because I, I, I know you do a lot of lives. Uh, whenever you do a live, does that does a live like whenever you're done, does it does that video feed go away or does it save as an actual video? It stays, but the chat goes away. Okay. Thank goodness, because people go way crazier in live chat than they do yeah. otherwise. But you should do it. Enable Super Chat. I just did it this last Tucson show. Mm-hmm. Probably made over $700 so far just on that. Oh. And you could do the same. Just do it sooner than later. Yeah, sure. I, I was, I've, I've, I've been really curious about doing uh, like a, a live feed while out rock, hound, rock hounding. But in every location I go, there's I'm in a dead area or there's just no signal at all. And tomorrow, where the part of the river I'm going to go, it's just outside of a conservation area, which is uh, protected. And um, but it's on public land, and so and it's right off of a wash that goes into the Colorado River. So I'm curious what I'm going to find. I think there. there's a way to buy external antennas for wi-fi so that might be something to look into yeah like for your phone and it might help you a little bit 
yeah, yeah. i'll definitely look, look into that <laughs> better get on to starlink we saw it twice yeah i saw it last night all my friends were tripping they thought oh, it was we were UFOs. so tripping yeah we, <laughs> we were camping out in the middle of nowhere you know we're trying to get away from civilization and we're just chilling the fires going out and we're kicking back watching the stars and like that that whole centipede you know, is making its way across the sky. Like what? It's so That's interesting crazy. when you see something like that. Like, yeah. Like the, the first time I saw that was out in Kentucky. I was out, I was out on the hood of my car just looking up and uh, my friends were asleep in the car. And uh, I was just like, I thought I was tripping. Like I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is that? I, I, I woke them. I was like, please tell me I'm not tripping. Like look up in the sky. And, uh, but yeah, it, it was, it was pretty cool to watch. Nice. And, uh, yeah. For the next time I'm on a podcast with you, I'll tell you folks an awesome UFO and, um, crystal story. Oh so, my gosh. Cliffhanger. Cool. Okay. He's <laughs> coming <laughs> back everyone. It's a big site, red crystal, <laughs> red, red emeralds. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Before we move on from Kurt, uh, you have an amazing forest behind you right now. That's, I was going to say, I like really, your background. Really good looking. <laughs> Your Me? forest, your beautiful forest. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Did, did you I, uh, do that? <laughs> no. Um, my mother-in-law, I guess she was just rearranging the room and put those were over there. And Now they're yeah. over here. Now they're over here. Does she I watch like the it. podcast too? What? Does she watch the podcast? I don't think so, no. <laughs> say, maybe, she, maybe she's like, oh, he's been nice over here. This is where Kurt sits. <laughs> Yeah. we're gonna give uh ragnar an environment <laughs> like oh yeah he, he kind of pops right there yeah yeah, yeah he's right there <laughs> he's in the forest <laughs> nice well well you can tell her that she did a nice job decorating your your okay. backspace there <laughs> right on <laughs> cool. hey we'll david do. do you have a, a project you're working on oh i just wrapped up commissions uh yeah i gotta make all my money back on the, everything I bought in Tucson, <laughs> and uh, so a lot of always a project, yeah. a lot of cutting, um, mostly turquoise. If anyone's interested, Taos Gemcraft on Etsy. Everything is 100% worked by me or a fellow Taos artist. Check it out. Help me uh, not hate myself for all the money I spent in Tucson. Oh, that's so I'll sweet. Really, you do need to help him. Because yeah. <laughs> you can't help yourself. You, you, you won't even eat or drink coffee. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think the question, the question is, do you drink your coffee? Do you make it at home or do you eventually go out and buy it? Uh, I don't like Starbucks. I do buy a lot of it because it's there. I don't like Starbucks though, but my grandma makes the best coffee. I prefer Ticino. Uh, it's creamed, not sweet. Oh, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Chino. I'm going to have that tomorrow morning. <laughs> Kyle, what are you working on? Um, so I, I still have to finish the Obsidian pro, uh, customer project that I'm working on, but that shouldn't, I should be able to get that wrapped up pretty quick. But my next uh, project, my friend Chris is probably going to be watching this podcast and I'm going to work on his knife again. Ooh. So a nice little blade. there's that. And then uh, petrified wood. Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. Oh my, <laughs> that's beautiful. Say that. So this this knife was finished. It was finished. And this is what's left of the handles. No, no. Oh no. But I I kept these because at some point I want to experiment with uh Kintsugi, which is repairing yes. broken stuff with gold. With gold. Yeah. And so um Chris, spoiler alert, you might get the the second knife back as a gift at some point <laughs> if awesome. i can ever uh successfully pull it off um if not I might just sit in a shadow box as a mis failed thing but i i think it should look okay if i am careful enough have you ever tried that before nope mending mending the crack with gold yeah you're gonna have a blast seriously no it's fun do you it's, think it's, you'll it's like pour it or use PMC like suck in with a vacuum with pulverized gold and glue? How how do you do it? I think some people just use like um like gold coloring for people that don't have a lot of money and can't buy actual gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some people 
Um, one of the, the uh, I think the easiest approaches is gold leaf, you know, like regular artist gold leaf, that's not very expensive. And then um, a lot of people will use the kombu gold leaf, which is a lot heavier. You know, if you're making a piece of jewelry, you'd use the kombu stuff. And if you're making a, a knife handle, maybe kombu would be better. And I can share some if you need it. I was, I, was, I was also torn between silver and gold because with the the blade itself being silver or not silver, but um, stainless oh, steel yeah. and the wood color, I feel like oh, silver would actually probably best suit that piece. So I'm still, it's still an experimental thing that I've in my, in my head. Silver for silver foil will be like yeah. baby food cheap. Don't even worry about that. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it would look nice too. And, you know, it, just to try to bring back something that was broken. Yeah. And it, this is one of those things where this is why I tell people to take your time. Don't rush things because mistakes will happen. And that's what happened here. I rushed it. I didn't do my normal routine. Figured, okay, it's getting late. I'm going to slap everything together. Call it good. No, don't do that. We'll mess up. No 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that may have what happened today with this. I was rushing. Don't rush. Oh. <laughs> it took, what, millions of years to grow. You can give it 10 more minutes. Yeah. Mm, yep. Good words. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm working on a, a collaboration video with uh, Pennsylvania Rock Hunter. And so I'm trying to finish that up. He sent me some really neat fossils. Nice. And then I'm also trying not to kill opals. And so I have like opals happening. And it's cool that you can't see those actually, because they still need it. There's a little while to go. Um, and yeah, I'll send you pictures. Um, <laughs> I'm writing it down so I don't, I know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, and, and I'll send you another picture here, but like chasing those ribbons, the there's the, uh, those are all p potentially gems in there. And so, nice. you know, uh, yeah, having the patience to slowly cut and then get down to the surface so that you can see what's there. And that was that intimate relationship that I was talking about in the beginning of the podcast where you don't want to do a batch of them. You're doing that one like you were talking about, David, where, you know, like you 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 want to, the gratification of like, I, I just saw your face for the first time. I want to see you all the way through the, to the beauty at the end. So, yeah, you got a midwife it. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so how it feels. And like, uh, you know, I've, I've unfortunately killed some, so <laughs> they don't always work out. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think that that's, um, that's part of what really makes it uh, real. I think for all of us, you just showed us your broken bag of bits and you're going to try to figure it out. And, and Kurt, you had a broken story today. And, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so worth doing to stick with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and like use that as the segue to like my tip. <laughs> Because that's what we do, right? What's what's the proper vernacular, Kyle? I mean, I was doing words of encouragement, but should we yes. do words of wisdom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go ahead and segue that into my words of wisdom is that we all break stuff. You know, if you're if you're rock hounding, you've probably broken a gorgeous piece in the scene that you've been not, like knocking on for a while. And you're just like, yeah, you're almost free and ka -ching! And, you know, like oh, this no. big specimen comes down like in a shattered, you yeah. know, plethora of pieces. And um, yeah, so we we've all done that. And then, you know, you you keep on going, you gather yourself up and and uh, try, try it again. Yeah. You know, stay with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next. Um, and to go along with like Karen was saying, that when you're working on something and something goes wrong, like. You can put it aside if you want, or you could move forward and create something new with it. Um, you can always, you you, you can always uh, create create something new, and it can be something even more more beautiful than the original plan you were going towards. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, David. Mm. 
Just words, words of wisdom. <laughs> Just do it. Don't we be know afraid. You have it. <laughs> don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be. Don't wait too long to make your channel. Uh, you, no matter what you do, someone's gonna learn something. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Mine, I'm gonna steal from my wife because she had mentioned it the other day, and it's always good to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Is um, whatever you put out into the universe will come back at you if that makes any sense um do good sorry i can't i can't quite put that together she would say a lot better than i would but it's basically <laughs> you know if you do right good on, if you do good thing good things will happen to you um even if it doesn't happen right away it just takes time um and so just be patient with with uh, the universe and you know good or bad things happen but definitely do good and be nice to others. It's easy to do. Just be nice. That's my words of wisdom. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before we move out, um, I, I definitely want to say, you know, as we've been going through the podcast and I, I thanked everyone from the top of the, the, the show for, for tuning in every week and uh, I welcome the new folks. And if you're still listening, hey, <laughs> thank you so much for making yes, it through to yeah. the end. And um, we, we want to know where you're watching from. Uh, we want to know who you'd like to see on the podcast. We did have Lapidary Dave requests. We did have Agate Dad requests. We've been having a lot of requests for people and we're so excited to be like yeah they're on next and so go ahead and drop it in the comments please like where are you watching from and who do you want to see or any of the topics that you might want to have us hit on the uh one. the podcast yeah eric rinomaki you <laughs> like uh, he's a friend of mine and he'll definitely do your podcast you know what he's he's already like been suggested <laughs> also so this is really great you know this is how we know for sure and Kirsten Safford, she's the flex shaft Dremel queen of YouTube Lapidary. For yeah, sure. yeah, we're we're definitely familiar yep. with her too. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. Thank you. Yes, we'd we'd love to. Uh, thank you, David, and and um. Oh, uh, David, where do people find you? Okay, so you've got your YouTube channel. Yeah, Lapidary Dave on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Tinder. Uh, Tinder <laughs> uh, and uh, Thurder. That's a smaller community, but yeah, for sure. Okay, Lapidary Dave everywhere, everywhere, Instagram, <laughs> like everywhere. Yeah, uh, Taos Gemcraft on Etsy. Okay, uh, yeah, because they're gonna be wanting to find you, of course. It like my mom watches, and I always think in terms of like, okay, if so, if somebody hasn't heard of you yet, which is totally you know like ridiculous <laughs> of course they have but if they haven't you know how would they find your material and so that's that's a, a way for them to to know where to go get you and also if anyone's ever in taos new mexico just ask around this whole town knows me i'll take you out to my favorite spots for rock hounding you can come use my shop we'll make you green chili enchiladas oh my gosh i'm coming everybody let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. everyone's invited to the yellow butterfly ranch <laughs> that is awesome right yeah. on um well and I, I also wanted to shout out to uh uh the viewers that dropped denver ontario homedale idaho um iowa new zealand benson arizona um and you, the list went on so thank you very much for letting us know where you're you're shouting from as well one thing I would like to do at some point is uh, have a globe behind me or even a map and to start putting pens where people are uh, watching from. It'd be really cool to be able to have that visual visual represent, oh, yeah. representation of where people are, are tuning in from. Definitely. That'd be great. 100%. That'd be awesome. Stunning. <laughs> I, I looked it up, but I, I did look it up, uh, look it up like maps realize they're expensive so that might be oh, make your own <laughs> I, you i'm not go. that good of an artist it might look a little off <laughs> that's all right it's gonna get pins in it anyway it doesn't need right to be that that's true yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you could also uh you could also like 
I don't, I don't, I don't know what style it's called, but I've seen where people will take like, uh, like torn up pieces of paper and like outline stuff, and you can make a map like that. SpongeBob There's... calls it rippy bits, right? <laughs> wow! <laughs> you guys remember that? We're all yeah. adults here. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. yeah, do you guys remember that episode? He's in class with Squidward, <clears throat> and he calls it rippity bits. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> art lessons from spongebob <laughs> like that is nice yes definitely okay well you you have your next week's project kyle <laughs> that might be a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome well thank you david so much for, for joining us and you know you're coming back oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we got to hear the uh, stories yeah about the bixen and the ufo in uh dixon new mexico it's a great one heck yeah <laughs> oh, all right well next week's um guest is going to be theo kellison monster yeah <laughs> he's killing it he's killing it um we had him on uh during the maker challenge and uh he was he's been on uh, vacation in florida with wild kyle and it'll be really exciting to kind of talk to him and see how his vacation went and uh yeah go from there um yeah, unless anyone else has anything other to say, I, I can take us uh, off and... No? Anyone? No? Uh, find some cool rocks, have fun, and uh, be one with nature. Yep, keep that works creating. For me. Yeah. All right, well, thanks everyone for uh, stopping by, and thank you again, uh, David, for being our guest for this podcast. And we're, we're looking forward to that UFO story on the next... I'm going to hear it next time. Definitely. <laughs> but Love y'all. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys later. Have a good night. Rock on. <laughs>